ഫ്രംസ്റ്റാർട്ട് Uh, even though when he was uh, less than 1 year old uh, he had a history of a small swelling at the lower part of the gluteal region on the uh, left side uh, initially it was treated with uh, uh, some herbal medications and later uh, some um, ind like procedure uh, uh, were done uh, due to the persistence of this illness uh, according to the patient uh, he was on uh, uh plaster for a uh, few months uh, he said that there is a, he, he he was on plaster uh, for uh, 12 months then he uh, noticed uh, shortness of the left lower limb and uh, limping and the limping was uh, gradually in onset and non progressive and painless in nature uh, according to the patient he could participate at all uh, out, outdoor games during the childhood and able to walk and run without support even though he got limping now he is able to do all activities including sitting cross leg and uh, squatting position there is uh, no history of joint pain uh, rest pain or night pain and no history of trauma and there is no history of uh, loss of appetite or loss of weight coming to past history he is on medication for uh, diabetes mellitus and, and dyslipidemia and Uh, coming to antenatal and postnatal history there is uh, no icu admissions and uh, developmental milestones were normal according to the age in the childhood and family but the, uh, uh, Tony, uh, but the patient came for some other complaint what was his complaint uh, sir uh, uh, patient actually came for uh, there is a uh, came for uh, upper thoracic uh, pain upper thoracic pain okay not for low back pain right? low back alla alla no not back back pain uh, no hip pain Uh, okay yeah that you can add, uh, add to that because uh, uh, he uh, he came for some other purpose is it related to this problem is important but it uh, uh, but that you have to tell always uh, the vital is not complete okay and proceed proceed okay sir uh, coming to general examination general examination for with the normal limits and uh, there is no feature of uh, ligamentar laxity Come, before uh, that can you summarize the history uh, in uh, one or two sentence can you summarize the history uh, sir uh, a 48 year old male patient he had a history of uh, some surgical procedure uh, at the age of 1 year uh, on the uh, lower aspect of the left gluteal region and after that he experienced limping and shortness of the uh, left lower limb uh, which was the limping was uh, non progressive and non painful actually when you summarize you are not supposed to repeat the history again uh, summary means should be a short and uh, crisp one okay you can uh, continue with your general examination finding Uh, general examinations are within normal limit and there is uh, no features of uh, ligamental laxity uh, coming to local examination of the left hip on inspection uh, the patient is lying uh, so uh, so pain uh, with the hip is extended and uh, both hip and knee extended and uh, patella and foot uh, appearing uh, externally rotated slightly and uh, angle in uh, neutral position and the level of the asi is at the same level and there is normal hollowing of the iliac fossa and no uh, normal fullness of the scarpus triangle and there is uh, significant uh, thigh muscle wasting present and there is uh, exaggerated uh, lumbar lordosis present and gt is uh, not visible on inspection the psi is uh, at the same level and the symmetry of the gluteal fold is normal 
and there is a gluteal muscle wasting also on the uh, left side and there is a uh, puckered scar of size uh, 2 in 0.5 centimeter present uh, just below the uh, left gluteal fold and uh, there is no uh, globular uh, mass seen posteriorly and there is uh, no uh, other uh, no sinus or no other scars coming to palpation uh, uh, no local rise of temperature and no joint line uh, tenderness both anterior and posterior uh, joint no post anterior and posterior joint line tenderness and uh, anterior superior less pain and posterior superior less pain at the same level and this scarpus triangle is uh, normal and there is no resistance in the scarpus triangle and uh, vascular so when you uh, uh, Tony, when you describe the uh, uh, the findings on the anterior side uh, i think this is the prone position no? you can the prone position ah yeah but it's prone okay uh, uh, i think can change over to the uh, first uh, a slide on my Okay. But uh, one instruction uh, uh, the anusopedia spine seems to be at a higher level. So even in examination, uh, when you do a uh, when you have, uh, do the instruction, we will describe the instruction findings. If the patient is obviously, if you have a Appearance like that, you, it is better to uh, tell about uh, like that. And about it, again, I'm going to put a little bit of 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 but uh, instruction is so obvious that uh, this on instruction you can tell appear to be at the higher level. You can tell just like that. Uh, the identity spine on instruction appear to be at the higher level to the same file. Okay. Sorry, Pina. For him, systematic item for us, I'm okay. And he didn't take anything completely that the lateral side of posture side of the boa. And you're a SIS of no Pina PSIS of no. Shuffle don't in a taken or confused out. Actually, there should be an order in which you are supposed to uh, present the inspection. Uh, if you are, uh, if your patient is able to stand up, it is better to start the inspection from uh, the standing position. From that position, you can see a lot of things. Uh, if you are starting your inspection from supine position, then then also you should either start from the foot end or from the uh, upper part of the uh, gluteal region. Uh, so, so here you can see that uh, there is obvious shortening of the uh, left leg and it appears to be external rotator and the uh, petrola is facing laterally and the thigh muscles appears to be wasted and like that you can go climb up or you can climb down. When we start our palpation then also you should start uh, in the same order either from above or below. So first tell about the anterior structures, then lateral structures and posterior. There should be a definite order. In the inspection, you are supposed to tell at least five things. Swellings and wasting, scars and sinuses, and deformity. Uh, and specific to the hip, you should tell about the position of the anterior superior, position of the patella, the length, and the lumbar lordosis. Okay. Suppose this patient is standing up. What would be the position of the knees? Have you made the patient stand up? Yes, sir. Uh, how was he standing? He's standing with the affected uh, knee, the upper leg. Yes. Either the patient will be standing with the uh, toss uh, of the left leg, or uh, he will be flexing the uh, normal knee to equalize the limb length. Okay. So, uh, standing examination is also important. Coming to palpation, there is uh, no localized or temperature and no uh, anterior joint line tenderness. And ASI is uh, at the same level and there is no resistance at the scar pass triangle. What about the exaggerated lumbar lordosis? Sir, sir, the lat anterior angular lateral parameter uh, is it exaggerated, sir. 
so uh, we are interested actually in the lymphadenosis so that that should be the first thing we should be hearing then you can uh, come anteriorly then lateral aspect of the hip okay sir the uh, vascular sign of narad is uh, positive that is femoral pulsation is decreased on the uh, left side and uh, and gait trochanter uh, at a higher level and the uh, gait uh, the surface is smooth and uh, not thick and it is uh, non tender also and there is a facade scar uh, posteriorly below the left gluteal line and the uh, gluteal muscle raising present and if, you, if there is a photo showing the scar you can just show is that uh, on the left it is not is it not uh, obvious on the lateral side no this is the scar you are telling about and there is uh, no uh, mass palpable uh, posteriorly coming to movements there is a fixed flexion uh, deformity of uh, 15 degree with the further flexion uh, up to uh, 90 degree uh, there is uh, how will you know that how did you know that there is a fixed flexion deformity uh, sir by doing the thomas test the uh, uh, i got the flexor flexion, flexion deformity of 15 degree and there is further flexion up to 90 degree and the adduction is no, 20 degree told like this uh, by doing the thomas test there is a fixed flexion with deformity of this much degrees and the further flexion is this much don't make the examiner ask you how did you do the uh, identify the uh, fixed flexion deformity okay. then the examiner will ask you how will you do the thomas test this is the standard way in which examination will be going uh, so uh, you should be prepared for all these things and what do you mean is uh, you just, why do i do the thomas test by flexing uh, that is routinely done alle angana thane parayanna ഡയറക്ഷൻ <laughs> 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 there there is a fixed flexion deformity of uh, x degrees uh, mm. by by doing uh, thomas which was evident by doing thomas mm. test mm. and further flexion is this much degree mm. uh, sir the movements uh, by doing the thomas test there is a fixed flexion deformity of uh, 15 degree with a further flexion up to 90 degree uh, there is no other deformities and the adduction is uh, 20 degree and beyond which it is uh, restricted and abduction is uh, 25 degree uh, internal rotation and external rotation Again, uh, i think you can uh, elaborate on that uh, when you try, after com completing the flexion deformity there uh, is a fixed flexion deformity agane le parnad le itra degree ah sir deformity is 15 degree ah uh, 15 degree is the further flexion of uh, 90 degree 90 degree uh, then uh, there is no Uh, you can just tell that anterior superior spine can be brought into uh, into the same level, and uh, uh, and there is no uh, adduction or abduction deformity. In the morning, I am going to say that there is no other deformities in the morning. And there are no deformities in the body. Then, when we are such a one, then we are going to say that 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 Uh, there is no adduction or abduction deformity as i can bring the angiospinal spine to the same level uh in other words okay which side which side is the affected one sir left side adduction of section here and if you go look at it you will not see it because it appears it is elevated and inspection you have already said that inspection le tony said the same level than you said But uh, obviously, uh, if you see the uh, photo, obviously, and just because we are such a higher level, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, and we we are we are uh, we are likely to feel that there is a reduction deformity. But the other part of the matter, the feeling is not. But when the feeling is not, then we are not going to be able to see it. No, no, no. Anyway, it looks like a short limb. 
perhaps a little externally rotated, anterior mm -hmm. superior left spine appears at a higher level. Mm -hmm. Left spine. Yeah, from the photo, it is, it is appearing very, it is very obvious. Okay, yeah. so you have to say that uh, because the, uh, uh, the examiner is likely to feel that there is an adaptive deformity from the appearance, from the gross appearance. So if you feel there is, it is at the same level, you, uh, you clearly say the angiospinal spine can be brought into the same level. In the bar bar in the bar. Okay, proceed. So the level of angiospinal spine is very important when we discuss about the adduction and abduction deformity. So you have to mention either the pelvis is already squared, that means all, both angiospinal and iliac spines are at the same level, or you have to mention it was whether at a higher level or lower level, and what you have done to make that uh, pelvis squared. Then only you should start mentioning about the adduction abduction deformity. If it is adduction deformity, you, you cannot bring the uh, limb to neutral from adducted position after squaring of the pelvis. Uh, so uh, the adduction and abduction deformity has to be mentioned only after uh, you squared the pelvis or only if the pelvis is already squared. So you have to mention that. How will you bring the, uh, suppose this is at a higher level. Uh, you are telling that it is at, uh, both are at the same level. Suppose this is at a higher level. How will you make the pelvis squared? Uh, sir, uh, if the uh, uh, SIS is at the higher level, we have to adduct the limb and make it in the uh, same level. Uh, use further adduct the uh, limb and bring down the anterior spinal spine and uh, then slightly abduct and make sure that uh, this much adduction deformity is there by comparing with the midline. Yes, sir. So that can be done by just uh, gently pulling the limb down. Other method and the acceptable method and So in the examination, it is better to tell that you have to uh -huh. abduct. Uh, mm -hmm. Pulling down means uh, that may not be suitable to some examiners. Uh, oh, the yeah. standard method is to further adduct to bring down or further abduct to bring up. So because uh, the you have to, this is a mechanism by which the adduction and abduction deformity uh, mm -hmm. created. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, which is a better answer This is another Abduction uh, square in both Buddha and Pitti, Varian and Old Pitti, this is another very like. This is sir. Nothing more to add. I have already uh -huh. discussed. Ah, the Buddha and the Parano, the other safer than the usual of Parano. Just the pulling the that can be done, that is obviously, but examination of the Parano is another than the usual of Parano. And then you want to square the pelvis. Uh -huh. Square the pelvis by uh, the material of squaring pelvis is uh, sort of another apathy on the log in Yana. So, Yamba is the bully and the number of Yaki Yamba square in it. About is the standard method which can be that is not a standard procedure. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But in the examination to get away without a confusion. If there is an adduction deformity further adduction until the anterior superior spine is okay. So, yeah. There is no, uh, so, there is no issue. Okay. That, that is the standard procedure. But, no? Standard. Okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, okay. Firing can be achieved by unmasking the deformity. That means if there is if at a higher level, it is an adduction deformity. Mm -hmm. adduct, it will come down. Mm -hmm. If it is at a lower level, if you abduct, it will go up. Yeah, uh, but if you are abducting, uh, only thing is uh, it will be uh, become become more obvious now. The, 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 I mean, uh, the deformity will be revealed. It will be obvious at the same time, the pelvis will become square. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is why, uh, that is how you uh, determine the adduction deformity. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, then. Hmm. Then are you pulling Okay. Are you pulling pulling down is not a standard answer. Okay, that's it's all. Standard right. procedure. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, proceed. Uh, proceed. Uh, sir, the uh, uh, pelvis is already squared, and so uh, there is no adduction and uh, abduction deformity. 
and the adduction is uh, 20 which degrees. is already squared does not mean that there is no adduction of the uh, pelvis the, the, there are two steps you have to square the pelvis and look for whether the limb is in the midline or not if the limb can be brought to the midline then there is no adduction or abduction deformity just because the both anterior superior leg spines are at the same level that does not mean that patient is not having adduction or abduction deformity uh, have you understood the point uh, okay uh, there are two steps first step is to square the pelvis then try to bring the uh, limb to neutral if you are able to bring the uh, limb to neutral uh, from both abduction and adduction uh, suppose uh, obviously uh, the patient is not having any deformity okay sir uh, things should be very clear okay sir there is an adduction of uh, 20 degree and uh, abduction of 25 degree and beyond which it is uh, restricted and internal rotation and external rotation is uh, 25 degree beyond which it is uh, restricted coming to measurements there is a uh, true shortening of uh, these are the only movements in the hip flexion extension abduction adduction are the only movements sir in the lotus next lotus okay sorry Again, Allah, clear, uh, sorry in the lotus next lotus rendu plane lo nokanda rendu plane lo nokanda nokiyar both in flexion i am not clear ാണ് <laughs> 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 Uh, in supine position with the hip extended uh, and supine position with the hip uh, flex and in prone position also in prone position the hip will be extended or flex sir uh, extended uh, hmm? so when you make the patient prone uh, and look for rotation actually you are looking for rotation in the extended position of the hip and uh, you uh, when you are looking uh, from uh, front you flex the hip and look for the rotation so these are the two standard methods by which you can do that but the mm. third method uh, which which is less painful is don't make the patient prone you uh, keep the limb extended and look for the rotation extended position so you are making the patient prone uh, to look for rotation in the prone po- uh, in the extended position of the hip joint in general uh, not for the examination in general what i feel is the easiest way is to Uh, rotate just to rotate the uh, hip that is in the extended position just to rotate the leg uh, alone uh, in quick assessment and but to be very specific regarding the angle uh, is uh, always prone uh, and the flexing the knee uh, if you are if you want to know it exactly uh, exact angle because the pelvis will be very much stable and there will uh, there will not be any movement of the pelvis when the patient is prone so uh, and the, the standard method is keeping it supine and flexible by hip and knee okay so uh, you must be able to answer all these things that's all okay proceed so coming to measurement uh, after measuring the apparent length and true length uh, there is a true shortening of uh, 4 cm on 4 cm on the uh, left side and which is uh, confined to the femur after measuring the uh, segmental measurement how did you measure the apparent length <laughs> so patient is supine uh, limbs parallel to each other and from which point to which point you are measuring sir from the external joint to the medial malleolar okay okay uh, how did you measure the uh, true length true length uh, first we have to uh, square the pelvis if uh, if the if there is any coronal plane of the and okay. uh, uh, make the limb identical to the opposite limb and then okay measure the, uh, then measure the true length okay uh, so what is the relationship suppose the patient is having an adduction deformity of uh, 10 degrees uh, there is an apparent uh, shortening of 
x and a true shortening of y then sir uh, apparent apparent length equal to true shortening plus the uh, measurement due to the deep mm -hmm. coming to a special test and uh, uh, tedelberg test is positive on the uh, left side and uh, and uh, telescopic test is uh, negative and lsc sign is also positive what do you mean by tedelberg test positivity what does that mean uh, it means that uh, when he when the patient starts on the affected side the sound side uh, sides okay what does that uh, mean uh, so there is a uh, uh, problem with the abductor mechanism it can be either at the uh, uh, fulcrum or uh, power power or uh, the lever lever arm so the abductor mechanism is not working properly so the patient is having a true hip problem so it could be uh, anywhere in the uh, mechanism but the problem is in the hip okay you can proceed your respiratory examinations are within uh, normal limits and gait is uh, unaided uh, short limb tedelberg gait and the foot is in so there are two, two elements in the uh, in the gait right there are two separate elements in the gait what are they yes sir there is a uh, short limb and tedelberg gait so what is the, if it is short uh, shortening what will be the classical description uh, there is a uh, uh, dipping of both shoulder and uh, hip to the Bo affected side both both, both shoulder uh, sorry the uh, Uh, shoulder and uh, the focus same side. Uh, yeah, yeah, the uh, shortened side or apical side will be in between. And what is the classical description of the Tendelberg gait? Yeah. Lurching of this. Hmm. So, uh, uh, looking back, uh, it may be a, a, a combination of lurching as well as dipping. Uh, only in the last video, the lurching is not very obvious. Uh, and that is uh, like along the down line. We, there are three, basically three abnormal gates uh, in the history. One is antalgic gate, second is tendon number gate, third is a short limb gate. This is basically having an antalgic gate, so you don't want to stand on the hip with the uh, with pain. So the stand space on the right side will be reduced uh, by increasing the speed of the swing of the opposite side. So patient will be taking off the disease leg from the ground, ground quickly. Have you understood that? And the patient, when you look at the face of the patient, patient may be being sick. So these are the things by which you will be identified in under the gait. Suppose the patient is having a short limb gait. Suppose you remove one of your shoes and try to walk. What will happen? The shoulder on the disease side dips. So dipping of the you are looking for the dipping of the shoulder. There is no swing. Uh, suppose the patient is having a, a tendon on the gait. What happens uh, when the patient stands on the disease side? Uh, the sound side tend to sag. Uh, so how do you prevent the sagging of the sound side uh, by swinging the shoulder uh, to the same side? Okay. Uh, so proceed. Okay. Uh, it's totally and hip and uh, spine are within uh, normal limits. What do you feel is that he came with a back pain? Uh, is the is the spine totally normal? Uh, normal, sir. There is no scoliosis or uh, at least there is some tenderness over the lear junction. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, uh, it's not pertinent to this uh, scenario, but uh, after all, he came for a bad thing. Okay, anyway, continue. Sir, uh, on examining the uh, hip lateral knee, contralateral hip, and the spine are within normal limits. Uh, neurovascular examinations are within normal limits. Okay. So. Discussion is there anything? Sir, my diagnosis is uh, uh, stable post-epic uh, sequelae of the left hip. What is the diagnosis? 
sir uh, stable uh, post septic cycle of the left hip why you should, why you add the stable unnecessarily on the task work because the uh, telescopy test is negative yeah yeah as i'm saying the diagnosis of hybrid uh നമ്മൾ സ്റ്റേബിൾ ത്രോ വാക്ക് വെറുതെ പറയണമെന്ന് നമുക്ക് കാണാം കുഴപ്പമൊന്നുമില്ല പക്ഷെ എന്താ സ്റ്റേബിൾ എന്ന് പറയണത് ജയപ്രസാർക്ക് എന്ത് പറയണോ സ്റ്റേബിൾ എന്ന വാക്ക് നമ്മൾ പറയണമായിരുന്നോ അതെ അതെ അതാണ് പത്തോളജിക്കൽ <laughs> 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 ാണ് <laughs> 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 ആ യെസ് സർ ഫ്രം യുവർ ഫ്രണ്ട് ഫൈൻഡിങ് ദ ഹെഡ് ഈസ് നോട്ട് ഇൻ ദി പൊസിഷൻ ഓക്കേ ഓക്കേ സോ ദാറ്റ്സ് എ വെരി ഇമ്പോർട്ടന്റ് ഫൈൻഡിങ് വിൻ കം ടു ദ ഡിസ്കഷൻ ഓക്കേ ഐ വാസ് അണ്ടർ ദി ഇംപ്രഷൻ ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് നാരത സൈനിസ് ഈസ് നെഗറ്റീവ് ദാറ്റ് മീൻസ് ദ പൾസേഷൻ ഈസ് സീക്വൻസി ഫെൽ ഫ്രണ്ട് ദി ഇംപ്രഷൻ ആയിരുന്നു ഓക്കേ So, so you can uh, uh, and 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 There is a flexion for muscle removal, deformity, and adaction of 20 degrees, vector in the rotation and vector rotation of 20 degrees. How much adaction? Sir, adaction is 20 degrees, sir. No. Oh. Abduction, uh, 25 degrees. This is the main problem. You would say there is a system of adaction deformity. Yes, and when you are saying there is abduction, it is self contradictory sir there is uh, no ad- adduction or abduction deformity sir then why you say it's at a higher degree it is fine at a higher level sir all the patient ingana cherinj kadana po photo eduthu undanga down palpation the size is at the same level sir palpation at the same level ha ah, yes sir 
Okay. But in the photograph you showed, the anterior super relaxed point is at a higher level, showing that there is a box of air. Adduction deformer. Oh. The photograph oh. which you showed was suggested of an adduction deformer. Sir, on examining, there is uh, definitely no objection or actually from this side. Okay, then you should be able to keep them at least parallel without uh, with the uh, limb actually, I mean, and the flex point, perhaps at the same level. I am not sure. What was your diagnosis? I My internet was lost for some time, so I did not follow completely. Sir, it is a uh, arthritis. What are your points in favor of making that diagnosis? From the history, uh, on, on, your inspection. History, uh, sir, on history, there is a uh, IND like surgical procedure where the, uh, they are in less than one year old. And when he was one year of age. Uh, less than one year, sir. Correct. Okay. Fine. Well, that is a very significant history. Is there any evidence of telltale evidence of a scar either in the front or a surgical scar or behind? Yes, sir. There is a uh, pocket scar on the uh, posterior aspect uh, just below the luteal fold on the left side. Right. Then you should be able to tell septic arthritis lead to four major complications. Pain, angulosis, which means stiffness of the joint, instability, and deformity. The mnemonic that I will use it is PAID, P -A -I -D. pain, angulosis, instability, and deformity. Does he have pain? Sir, uh, he has no pain, sir. He has no pain. Does he uh, have stiffness, the, restriction of movements? Yes, uh, yes, sir. There is a restriction of movements. Right. Then does he have instability? Could you demonstrate uh, telescopy? Uh, yes, sir. There is no uh, instability, sir. The uh, telescopy test is negative. What about Trendelenburg? Trendelenburg test is positive, sir. So that is a sign of attack against stability. Then deformity is there. Uh, yes, sir. There is, a, uh, there is only uh, fixed flexion deformity of uh, 15 degrees. Okay. From the picture, I felt he has got an adduction deformity, but I don't know. And you find you were saying that the femoral pulse is felt less distinctly on that side. Yes, sir. Right. Now, I, I think somebody presented the paper, I mean, topic on uh, congenital dislocation, where Narath described this finding as a... Uh, Clinical examination finding with respect to CDS, if I am right. I think in, from our discussion only, sometime back in the past. Anyway, that is not. I think so. He did a little bit of uh, historical background, uh, which Dominic appreciated in that sense. Uh, yeah. Where is the head felt then? Uh, sir, uh, I didn't. Uh, uh, felt the head of the femur, sir. That there means you more... assume that the head of the femur is probably destroyed, absorbed, and is not there. Uh, maybe, sir. Yes, sir. That means the limb is short. Yes, sir. Right. And then perhaps your explanation that this may be uh, loose, but that if the movements are restricted, then definitely that is a finding there. See, Dr. Kishore was asking you, what are your findings in favor of a, an arthritis? The conventional uh, uh, statement with respect to an arthritis is, if all movements are restricted with pain or spasm, if there is a, uh, certain movements are restricted and certain movements are free, then there is a mechanical derailment. Here, if all movements are restricted, well, that is a sign in favor of making a diagnosis of arthritis, no harm, with a history of uh, infantile uh, sepsis possibly, and then he has been having this problem. How old is he now? Sir, 40, 40, sir. Yeah, so you should be able to make a diagnosis of an old septic arthritis with a sequelae, with a early or degenerative arthritis or secondary osteoarthritis. That should be your diagnosis. Understand. But uh, was he under, uh, when he was under 10 years old, it is unlikely to be tuberculosis, but uh, we don't know, but most likely it must be a septic arthritis. So, uh, and how much is the shortening? Sir, uh, four centimeters. 
four centimeters. Okay, why has it come now for? Now uh, for back pain uh, is uh, uh, riding a bike. So uh, he felt he started to have back pain while riding the bike. So he came. To. So his problem is back ache and not hip pain. Uh, no hip pain, sir. No hip pain. No, no, no. He doesn't what, have any what, problem what, what, with respect to the hip pain. He doesn't have any hip pain. Sir, no hip pain, sir. And there is uh, and when no you problem. examine him, no, no, we, we, we got a big bearing on that, what you are going to say with respect to the treatment. When you try to move, was the movement painful? When you go beyond the, the accepted range, when forced movements are painful or not? Uh, sir, mechanical restriction for the beyond the there is no pain or spasm when you try to move it beyond certain range. Uh, yes, sir. Yes or no? I couldn't hear. Yes, sir. She has no pain. No pain, sir. Right. Okay. Oh, this problem is with respect to back pain. Okay. So my uh, my doubt is if it is is it but avoid the, the term arthritis in the diagnosis. Because uh, there is absolutely no pain. Only thing is that there is a restriction of the movement, and about which he is not bothered. Uh, so, uh, if you are telling arthritis as the diagnosis, will that produce any problem or a stiffness alone? Can you call it as arthritis? No, sir. Sir, patient arthritis in the There is no. The head is not in the uh, socket because vascular sign of neuralgia is positive. But you cannot palpate it separately. So uh, it is not, uh, you cannot comment about a dislocation. Uh, so movements are restricted. So the head may be destroyed and the rest of the part may be articulating. Uh, it is more proximal part of the uh, abdomen or the, uh, uh, it, it articulating proximal part is the normal abdomen. And the head, the portion of the head is destroyed. I will put it in but the but the, then, then there is a gross shortening which cannot be explained. Four centimeters yes, shortening right. is not, hmm. cannot be explained. Okay. So the head may not be there, and the rest hmm. of the proximal femur may be articulating more proximal to the normal acetabulum. Okay. That is why the movements are re uh, reduced. Hmm. And and there is no, I mean, in my opinion, there is no harm in making as a simple old infective arthritis. He is developing definitely a secondary osteoarthritis. I will stick on to that. But his problems are due to back pain, maybe due to that shortening and the unstable hip. So that is causing strain onto the back pain. That's a different issue. But uh, as far as the hip is concerned, he definitely has got a sequelae of an old septic arthritis. No, no doubt about it. And old septic arthritis become painful when they are in the middle age group, that is 45 above, etc. And it is showing early signs, but there is no harm. They don't have to uh, split the hair and say whether you should make a diagnosis for arthritis or an unstable hip like that. He has definitely features of septic arthritis in the past, and it is becoming symptomatic. The symptoms are now with back pain, but at some point the hip is definitely at fault. So no harm. I will accept it as an examiner. Okay, so uh, so uh, uh, clinical diagnosis uh, there. Is there any other diagnosis that has to be entertained for uh, discussion? So for discussion purpose, DDH also comes to play. Uh, usually, the it has to be uh, uh, okay. uh, It is uh, only a rare possibility, but uh, I think it's mainly, it's mainly tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. Tuberculosis could be a difficult diagnosis. DDH, we are like him. Mm -hmm. Older tuberculosis or uh, fresh one? Uh, or because old tuberculosis. Old tuberculosis. Sickly of old tuberculosis. So rather than a tone smith. Oh, okay. That also has to be, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that used to be considered the second possibility. Second possibility. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think uh, we have, uh, there is no much uh, problem in the diagnosis, in, uh, diagnosis which is straightforward case. So you can uh, see the x-ray now. Uh, I want to go back to that first period again. 
Uh, because the, the candidate must be capable of presenting it properly. Mm -hmm. That's slide number two. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it. When you see that in an inspection, you should be able to say that, the, of course, assuming that the left is at fault, the left, the left lower limb is short. The patella appears to be rotated a little laterally. It appears to be externally rotated. Am I right? Obviously, yes, in the photo, it is like that. Huh? What about yeah. the internal rotation? How much was the internal rotation, clinically? Tony? Uh, internal rotation of uh, 25 degrees. 25 is possible. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and then, and as Superior explained to me, it appears like a little uh, elevated. Ah, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so yeah, this association one, is not with us. We cannot uh, comment. And the, the knee joints are at two different levels, if you look at it carefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The knee joint of the left one is definitely at a higher level in comparison mm -hmm. to the Right one. So the thigh is wasted. So these are the findings which you should be able to say very clearly. The limb is short, the limb is externally rotated, the thigh segment appears to be wasted. And if there are any scars in front or the side or the back, which I cannot see from here, but that should be mentioned. And then there is an element of exaggerated load also. These are the findings that you should never miss in the examination. Shortening, rotation, wasting of the thigh. Presence or absence of the scars around the hip, front, side, and back, and then the lumbar lordosis. So never forget that because that should be your order. If you present your case properly in the beginning itself, you will get the attention of the examiner that you mean business. If you start really carrying around from here to there and there to here, then you may not get the full attention and then you will be missing the boat. So that should be your system. And the the knee appears to be at a higher level. There is a shortening of the femoral segment. No doubt about it. And that should be brought in. Right. Okay. Now you go with the x-rays. Uh, sir, this is a uh, x-ray of the pelvis AP view. Uh, there is a marked uh, restriction of the uh, head and uh, marked uh, destruction of the uh, and neck. And the, the remaining part of the femur is like uh, outside the acetabular fossa. And it will form a uh, pseudo arthrosis, and the uh, greater trochanteris appears at the higher level. What about the acetabulum? Sir, uh, acetabulum is uh, partially destroyed, and, it, and the, uh, uh, the acetabulum is empty, sir. And there, uh, Stavulum, uh, empty. Uh, I think uh, you should uh, qualify it as it is poorly developed, and there is no head of the femur inside the acetabulum. Destruction, you cannot say as it is. Uh, Stavulum is poorly developed, it is uh, really hypoplastic. Is there any pseudo stabulum? That is high above, yeah. Above, there is a false stabulum being formed at the neck yeah. of the femur. Head is totally absent. The neck is partially absent with sides showing sclerosis. The side of the ileum and the neck are showing sclerosis. So does it support your diagnosis? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the uh, gated to country is uh, elevated and head is uh, not possible. That is ultras, while vascular sign of narrative was positive. No, radiologically. Radiologically, could it be CDS? Uh, no, sir. Why? Head is not in the acetabulum. Acetabulum is underdeveloped. Sir, uh, head is completely destroyed and neck is also partially involved. You should put it the other way. In the CDH, usually the head of the femur will be present. It may be smaller, but it will be usually present. It will never be absent. There will be a delay in development. That means by one year it may not appear sometimes. But at this age, it will definitely be there. But here there is absolutely no sign of the head of the femur. 
So it is uh, unlikely to be acidious. Healed tuberculosis can be. Yes, sir. Uh, with this radiological picture, what do you feel? Will the NARAD sign positive or negative? Looking at the X-ray. Well, uh, what is the how uh, the narrow sign become positive? Why uh, narrow sign, sign become positive? Sir, the uh, bony support is uh, low. Mm -hmm. From looking at the X-ray, do you feel the bony support in this case will be lost? Yes, sir. Yes. There is no uh, this pressure. Will the sign the narrow sign the sign? That's a different matter. But if you are if you are asked the put the question in this after seeing the X-ray, do you feel the narrow sign is positive or you can negative? Or you can tell will the sign that on the positive or the negative or the level? I think the support is coming again. The support coming again. Okay. Last. So pulsation may be weak. Have you got any more X-rays? Uh, no, sir. No other X-rays. Uh, why I wanted to say that? Go back to the pelvis X-ray because that shows that the trochanter is practically kissing the iliac iliac crust. I mean iliac bone. You can see a lesion. I mean a erosion around the vault or table. There is no. I mean if you. Keep it a little abducted if that is it possible, then probably it must be hitting against the uh, uh, pelvic bone. Anyway, that doesn't matter, but you can get an x ray to demonstrate that. But uh, uh, there is no head, there will be definitely that is not a sign of uh, uh, CDX, because in that, that, that situation, the head must be present, which is not there. The head is completely destroyed, it's neurotic and has formed a false jaw. No doubt about it. The original acetabulum appears to be at a lower level. The lesser trochanter is not seen. That means it is not externally rotated. It is probably internally rotated in comparison to the clinical appearance. But then probably that was also well developed at the time of uh, original infection, probably got destroyed or whatever. We don't know. But otherwise, with the clinical finding, I expected the lesser trochanter to be more prominent, but it is not seen there. The lesser trochanter is, uh, in fact, invisible there. Uh, you would support your diagnosis of an old septic arthritis, no doubt about it. Does it appear to be, I don't know, with a wandering acetabulum, somebody might ask the question whether it is, could be tuberculosis. But unlikely, because it was happened at the age of a few months after birth, tuberculosis is unlikely at that point of age, and probably there was no history of and, uh, continuous treatment at that time. So naturally, we should stick on the diagnosis of an old infective arthritis. Now, uh, that's all I can say about the x-ray uh, with uh, respect to that. If the patient is around, then you must be take an x-ray in adduction and reduction to make sure that the great trochanter is not causing a bony obstruction, just for academic purpose, not for any other dish. I mean, that's what you want. Okay, so we can go to the manager part, Slay, because uh, uh, obviously uh, this patient do not want any treatments, at, at least at present. But suppose this patient is a 20-year-old uh, male uh, who is yeah, unmarried, and he is bothered about his limb length. Uh, what, must be the, uh, uh, what will be uh, your approach? Suppose the patient is 20 year old, unmarried boy. Sir, initially we can give a uh, field rights. No, uh, uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, rights. Heal what is the purpose of giving a heal rights? Uh, uh, to uh, overcome the shortening. Is there any other purpose of giving heal rights? And also in, uh, make make the footing equinus. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So how many shortening? How many uh, centimeters of shortening? Four centimeters. Four centimeters. Okay, that will. Uh, so much 
and then some physiotherapy can be considered. We ask the next question, what will you do if it is a younger person? That you answer. Sir, we can uh, go for uh, uh, femoral lengthening procedures, sir. Femoral lengthening is uh, OK. Uh, why, 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 why you want to do uh, sir, uh, uh, by using uh, Elisara method, sir. Mm -hmm. then, like, then, then, uh, articles managing the sequelae of Tom Smith arthritis. Of which one is the Elisara hip reconstruction osteotomy. That is uh, even one article is published from Paul Gatch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that includes uh, two osteotomies and the proximal and distal levels. Oh, mm -hmm. two osteotomies and lengthening. Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. That is uh, an accepted uh, treatment nowadays in mm -hmm. centers where it can be safely done. Uh, proximal is done at, uh, uh, at the left of the level. At the level of the scale too. It's actually pelvic support osteotomy, support same as trans yeah. osteotomy, mm -hmm. and lengthening is done at the distal osteotomy side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So only the angulation is at the proximal level. Okay. Oh, angulation, adduction deformity. It is ideally mm -hmm. done in places where there is marked adduction deformity. Mm -hmm. The adduction is corrected at the shans osteotomy, and mm -hmm. the resultant virus is corrected at the supracondylar mm -hmm. region. Mm -hmm. Second mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Adduction is corrected at the this will produce a virus mm -hmm. in the lower part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is corrected by a supracondylar osteotomy where lengthening is also done in the same city. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. He has, uh, I think, three or four cases reported. Elis Ravo, hip reconstruction osteotomy is the answer. Mm -hmm. Or equally of complete arthritis in young patients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Older patients, of course, you have an option of THR. THR, yeah. So uh, this uh, this answer must be ready. The EU is E for the answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In a, uh, for uh, if you are a 20 year, uh, 20 year old boy, a uh, person. Then, first of course, they can you can tell about the heel uh, 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 race and all, but second must be like this. Okay. Correcting only shortening can be done by lengthening, femoral lengthening. Uh -huh. This is a better option, in, especially in expert stance. Okay. And if it is an old older patient and he is uh, coming with a uh, so what are uh, in this patient suppose he is coming with the severe pain inability to walk then what must be your treatment uh, Tony for uh, hip reconstruction surgery should be considered mm -hmm. uh, uh, Tony when the, in the examination hall when somebody asks you what will you do for a painful hip this one jumped into surgical procedure it should be in a specific order. First, you will be uh, doing some non-pharmacological measures. 
some pharmacological method and uh, see the patient later. And still the patient is having pain and then only you will be offering some surgical procedures. So uh, in ship there are some standard non-pharmacological methods uh, to relieve the uh, uh, weight bearing of the ship. Uh, How will you do that? We can ask the patient to reduce the weight. We can ask the patient to uh, carry a stick on top of the side, like that. So there are a lot of non-pharmacological methods. Then uh, you can use some pharmacological methods, so like simple analysis. If we, uh, we consider that the patient is having severe pain, then uh, what, are the, uh, what are the problems you are likely to encounter in doing a uh, joint replacement? Uh, he already told about the... Um, <coughs> about the solar problem. Ah. Ah. Sorry, David. Ah. Ah. Sir. No, no, I am David. You carry on. Ah, I see. Uh, I got it. Sorry, sir. I got it. Uh, 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 I will ask uh, Sudhir or Nulia? Sudhir 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 What are the problems you are like? Because you, those who are interested in joint replacement, if the family is interested in joint replacement, We'll be uh, asking a bunch of questions uh, regarding the joint replacement in this case. Ah, yes. Uh, ah. This is actually, that will be an advanced question. Once the examiner mm -hmm. starts asking such questions, that means you have passed the examination. Especially <laughs> in case of a, <laughs> case of a DDH or a uh, specular of uh, septic arthritis, the hip will be articulating more proximally. Uh, mm -hmm. The acetabulum will be uh, uh, ill-formed. And the proximal part of the femur will be also narrowed. You can have two options. You can bring the hip down and uh, keep the acetabular component in the two acetabulum. Or you can keep the uh, hip in the pseudo uh, position and there you can keep your new acetabulum. So uh, there are advantages and disadvantages for these two options. So the discussions will be around whether you will be bringing down the hip uh, to the normal position and what are the problems you are going to encounter when you try to do that. And uh, if you are not doing that, if you are keeping the acetabulum in the abnormal position higher up, what are the problems you are likely to uh, face? Uh, so when you are bringing down the uh, hip to the normal position, the sciatic nerve palsy is a potential uh, problem. Uh, but you can uh, make the hip uh, as if uh, normal. The biomechanic hip will be normal, but there is a grave risk, risk of having a sciatic nerve palsy. And uh, the acetabulum and the proximal femur will be formed. So these are the general things. There are other specific thing, thing, uh, things which we can discuss on a later date. Because I have got presentations, we can discuss that on later days.